Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to another tournament online and this time is Chessable Masters. This is the part of Magnus Carlsen Tour, the series of the tournaments uh, hosted by Chess24.com platform and Magnus Carlsen. And this time we have 12 uh, Super Grandmasters uh, and a couple of new faces. So Pentala Hare Krishna from India, Vladimir Artemiev from Russia and Taimur Rajabov from Azerbaijan uh, plays for for the first time in this huge tournaments uh, online this year. Uh, and these are the groups. So we have group A and group B. In group A uh, playing first, we have Magnus Carlsen, Hikaru Nakamura, Alexander Grishuk, Daniel Dubov, uh, Vladimir Artemiev and Pentala Hare Krishna. And in group B, which gonna play it, um, next day, uh, Maxim Vashiel Lagraf, Ding Liren, Jan Nepomniashi, Fabiano Caruana, Taimur Rajabov and Anish Giri plays for uh, another time. So these are the groups and uh, I would like to show you one of the games from the day one. So Magnus Carlsen, number one in the world, triple world champion. This is rapid time control, so rapid uh, ranking 2881. Magnus Carlsen, current world champion, 29 years old and he's gonna play as white. And his opponent is the winner of Lindores Abbey Rapid Challenge 2020. Uh, other tournament played as uh, part of Magnus Carlsen Tour. Daniel Dubov, number 12 in Rapid Time Control. His Rapid Ranking 2770. He is only 24 years old and he's gonna play as black. And interesting is that Daniel Dubov actually is the Magnus Carlsen second, the person who helps him to prepare for. For the, for the tournaments, for the matches, for example, for world champion, uh, finding the new ideas on the board. Uh, so they know each other because, you know, they work together. And also Daniel Dubov in the, in the Lindores Abbey Rapid Challenge, he won the match against uh, Magnus Carlsen. So uh, he definitely, you know, knows how to play against Magnus, but Magnus definitely will want to, you know, uh, get his revenge. So without further ado, let's see what happened on the board. Magnus Carlsen opens with d4. We have knight on f6, knight on f3, maybe some kind of Indian games and indeed c6. And this is called Czech Indian. Uh, and here what to play as white. So uh, c4 is of course possible. Bishop on f4, this is expected as Magnus Carlsen loves this move. Uh, e3 is possible. g3 going for some king's Indian at setup. However, Magnus Carlsen plays for the first time in the, uh, let's say, serious tournaments on the top level uh, history and he plays h3, h3. Uh, the idea is a, is a pretty interesting because after d6 we have bishop on f4. So now you remember from the last tournament Magnus was often uh, attacked with the with the knight on h5 attacking this bishop uh, and he just gave up this bishop. This time bishop can easily retreat to h2. So this is the this is the idea. Knight b on d7, e3 and now g6 by Daniel Dubov. Bishop on e2 and now bishop g7. We have castle, castle uh, and now c4. So pretty standard. And now because of the knight on b1 is not developed yet. Uh, so uh, Daniel Dubov jumps with the knight on e4. Uh, we have queen on c2 attacking the knight. And now instead of playing something like f5 or bringing the knight to f6, uh, Daniel Dubov plays e5, attacking the bishop, okay? Uh, and now the situation is uh, quite complicated. Of course, the, the, the queen can take the, the knight for the, for the bishop exchange, but Magnus loves his bishop, so bishop on h2. We have knight on h5, as, as Daniel Dubov don't want to weaken the pawn structure uh, around his king, also don't want to bring the, the knight, as this knight would be uh, not really comfortable without the support of the pawns. So we have knight on g5, and uh, this knight is not well placed, so probably gonna be exchange. We have knight b on d2, knight on f3 as planned, and now knight on f3. 
we have rook on e8 preparing to control the, the e file and now rook f on d1 so magnus doesn't care about e file he's saying okay but i'm gonna control maybe d file what about that uh, daniel goes for queen on e7 so he says okay my queen is not happy on the d file as this you know uh, this x-ray can can disappear pretty fast uh, this knight will be will be stuck over there so uh, maybe queen on e7 is the good idea we have rook a on c1 uh, and now e takes on d4 and now magnus should go with the knight on on d4 and now keeping this pawn structure to make the obstacle for the for the for the semi open file so a black would not have the easy control on the on the e file however we have e takes on d4 and now asking daniel do you want to take my bishop uh, the problem is this is a trap so uh, if 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 daniel takes on e2 then rook e1 and now what would you play as black this is the problem you cannot take the the queen uh, because you're gonna lose the the exchange you are exchanged down now uh, and if you take on e1 this is even worse because after rook on e1 uh, rook on e1 knight on e1 we have the queen for the bishop and the and the rook so it's even worse so um, after e takes on d4 daniel dubov goes for the rook so he plays bishop on h6 and asking magnus what you want to do with this rook uh, and magnus said are you sure you want to extend the dark square bishop your uh, you know dark squares around the king gonna be weakened i still have uh, you know uh, the dark square bishop uh, that's a pretty risky stuff but okay i'm i'm accepting the challenge uh, so we have bishop on d3 uh, and and daniel said okay uh, all in if i said a then i have to say b bishop c1 queen on c1 and look at this queen is coming to h6 maybe with the support of the bishop uh, and and that can be a, a problem so we have queen on f6 daniel says okay i'm i'm gonna control the dark squares with my queen at least i'm gonna try uh, bishop on f4 so any you know moves like bishop on g5 bishop h6 are definitely expected we have knight on f8 uh, bringing the the knight closer to the defense and now bishop g5 by magnus carlsen uh, and here daniel could go for queen on g7 and let's say uh, some threefold repetition would be possible uh, however daniel is not interested in the in the draw as you know the, the pieces it's a fairly unbalanced okay we have the the exchange difference in the exchange and now uh, Playing on the dark squares is the only advantage of Magnus. Uh, however, uh, Daniel is not interested in the draw and Magnus is also not interested in the draw. We have queen on h8 and now d5 by Magnus Carlsen. C takes on d5, c takes on d5 and now knight on d7. So remaneuvering the, the knight as the knight on f8 doesn't make much sense now. It cannot jump, for example, to e6 to protect the dark squares. So maybe at least can go somewhere somewhere else maybe here maybe here uh, maybe support the the f6 move uh, we have bishop on b5 attacking this knight pinning this knight so the knight cannot move now uh, and black could go for a6 immediately now uh, forcing this bishop to exchange for the knight uh, actually this bishop if goes for example here that is not really great square also here is is also not really great square for the bishop so probably would exchange after bishop on d7 queen f4 the game could continue uh but it's still unlikely as as white would uh, have the you know uh, the chance to win that game probably would end it in the draw uh we have queen on g7 and now bishop on h6 queen on f6 and now rook on d4 so lifting the rook and bringing the rook to the attack and and it looks like uh, it's a uh, pretty dangerous now we have a6 uh, forcing the the bishop to do something but magnus first go with the rook on f4 uh, kicking the queen we have queen on e7 and now bishop on d7 bishop on d7 bishop g5 harassing the queen uh, and now rook a on c8 attacking the queen on c1 and what to play uh, we reach the, the the position from the thumbnail and here Magnus should go I mean it he could go for for Queen on C8 and after exchanging the pieces 
This is the draw, all symmetrical pawn structure, and uh, this is just a, just a draw. I mean, Black can try to play with the with the bishop, but unlikely. The game probably would be very long and boring. Uh, so Magnus goes for for something really really interesting. Queen on a1, and the idea is. Uh, to do not lose the tempo, you know, with fighting with the queen, because Daniel will definitely want to come uh, with the with the queen to e2 and then try to exchange the queen. So uh, Magnus doesn't want to uh, lose the tempo, uh, want to play b3, want to bring the the queen, make some you know attacks here, maybe here, uh, and some mating ideas. It looks like pretty dangerous. Uh, however, the problem is it's not really the greatest move. I mean. Uh, it requires a lot of uh, precise calculation. So uh, we have queen on e2 by Daniel Dubov, b3 as planned, and now rook on c2. And now, yes, if black plays some, you know, some slow move, let, let's show the, I don't know, the slowest move ever. Uh, something like after queen on f6, we're gonna have a5, okay? And this is, of course, the checkmate. So here is the problem, that is a checkmate. Uh, but of course, uh, you cannot expect that Daniel to play any slow moves uh, because there is also checkmate coming here. This is the problem. This is the, the checkmate. So what Magnus prepares here is bishop on h4 defending and now this is a very serious threat. Okay, the bishop can come back and that's gonna be a checkmate. So uh, here Daniel could go just to win the pawns, uh, something like rook on a2, okay, uh, and after queen on f6 just play Queen on d1 with check and queen d5, defending, winning two pawns and defending f7. Uh, but it looks like pretty risky and here Daniel just want to play simple chess. Rook on b2, now uh, saying, okay, your queen is trapped over there, you cannot move. We have king on h2, so moving the, the king from the, from the first rank, and now queen on c2, and it looks like uh, Daniel Dubov want to checkmate the queen. Uh, in the truth, he just want to exchange the queens and enjoy being the exchange up. Uh, we have rook on c4 attacking the queen, but now queen on b1, forcing uh, white actually to uh, exchange the queens. We have queen on b1, rook on b1, and now rook on c7, going after the bishop and after the pawn. We have bishop on f5, uh, and here bishop on f6, uh, keeping this, you know, still dangerous. So, for example, if the rook Rooks come, uh, then white can, for example, try to checkmate on the 8th rank. Uh, we have h6, so making some space, but it's just the beginning, because it still would be a checkmate. If the king moved to uh, to h7, then, of course, that still would be a checkmate if the, if the rook, of course, goes somewhere. So, uh, here... Actually, rook on b7 should be probably played, and after uh, bishop on e4, uh, exchange some of these pieces, rook on b6, uh, and now going after some of these pawns, and uh, maybe this way. Uh, so this was possible, probably the best option for Magnus. However, he goes for knight on d2, now attacking the, the rook, but also uh, defending e4, so the bishop cannot come and, you know, and take the pawn on d5. However, uh, the rook can come to d1 now, so rook on d1, knight on c4, now going after the, the d6 pawn, uh, we have rook on d5, and now rook on b7. So, uh, now white can create some passed pawn. Uh, we have bishop on e6 now by Daniel Dubov, rook on a7, going after the, the pawn, and now rook on d1. Uh, and here, if playing rook on a6, which of course was possible, bishop c4 and messing up the pawn structure, b takes on c4, uh, and let's say after rook on d2, uh, f4, uh, king f8, and maybe a4 trying to march with this pawn, uh, it's all too slow. Uh, rook c8, a5, rook c2, winning this pawn. Of course, it cannot be taken now because that would be a, a checkmate as this is, you know, uh, controlled. So rook on c2 first and after rook on d6, uh, 
you know, with this pawn, uh, Lonely, uh, Daniel Dubov would definitely win that game. So Magnus Carlsen knows about that, so he tries something else. Knight on b2, this was played. Uh, we have rook on d2, attacking the, the knight and also attacking the, the pawn. Uh, of course, the knight is defended for now. Uh, however, we have king on g3. So Magnus wants to bring the king to the game. Uh, and here, g5 g5 very important move before uh, you know bringing another rook to the attack uh, because otherwise we would have this mating idea uh, rook on a6 by magnus so he creates two passed pawns uh, we have rook on c8 bringing the the rook to the second rank uh, and now h4 uh, messing up the pawn structure we have g takes on h4 uh, and this bishop of course defends the the knight so uh, shouldn't be taken and the king defends the the f2 pawn so uh, we have king on f3 and now rook c on c2 the problem is there is nothing on the on the last rank so rook a8 just doesn't work as i said there is some escaping uh spot so uh, king can escape very very easily uh, so we have knight on a4 as the knight was attacked uh, twice however we have rook on f2 winning the bishop uh, and after king on e3 uh, and rook on f6 uh, Magnus Carlsen resigned the game as he is the whole rook down so uh, this was the game pretty interesting Magnus Carlsen uh, didn't manage to, you know, uh, to revenge uh, his loss from the Lindores Abbey tournament. Uh, he lost again and Daniel Dubov, you know, plays pretty well. Uh, he just gambled a bit with these dark squares. However, uh, however, he was he was sure that at least with the draw, uh, he can handle this attack. And yeah, definitely he did. Uh, so yeah, that's what happened. And I would like to show you the stand Standings after the uh, day one, so Group A standings. Vladislav Artemiev, Vladislav Arde Artemiev, three and a half points. So I would like to show you one of the games of Vladislav definitely. So stay tuned. I will I will upload one more um, video today. Daniel Dubov three points, Magnus Carlsen and Hikaru Nakamura two and a half points, uh, and Alexander Grishuk two points, Pentala Hari Krishna one and a half points so definitely not the best tournaments not the best uh, the beginning of the tournament for for pentala Hare krishna so far uh, however uh, we still gonna have the the one more day in group a so uh, stay tuned and if you don't want to miss uh, another videos press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one